Now, the SCTV Evening News with Floyd Robertson and Earl Cannonbear. Brought to you by Rolling Hills. Good evening. This is the news. Today's top story. Floyd, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to say welcome back. Well, thank you. Thank I you. know you've had a very difficult year, and uh, I'm just glad and proud that, uh, that you made your uh, drinking problem public in a very direct and forthright manner. I think it took a lot to do that. Thanks again, uh, Earl. Uh, thank you. But uh, I really don't want to dwell on it too much. Well, I don't want to dwell on it either. I just think that uh, it took a lot of courage to do what you did. Anyone in the public eye, as you are, uh, who falls prey to public weaknesses, uh, human weaknesses, like drinking binges, and, and then coming out publicly and admitting it, I, I think it's certainly a feather in your cap. Now, look, it was just a problem. That's all a drinking problem. Nothing uncommon, okay? I had to deal with it, and I did. Hey, to get so touchy about it. I'm not touchy. I think you're a little defensive. No. <laughs> I, I just think you're making too much of this. Okay. <laughs> okay, today's top story. There was a demonstration in town this week, and it caused quite a furor. Mellonville held its annual May Day parade this week, and an unusual number of communists turned out for the festivities. Throngs of demonstrators crowded the streets as an estimated 200,000 fellow travelers on colorful Soviet gear, marched and sang the Internationale. Mellonville Mayor Tommy Shanks was quite surprised and was quoted as saying, I couldn't figure it out. There were so many communists out there today, you could shake a stick at them. Unquote. Earl? Well, I don't know about you, Floyd, but this uh, communist thing really uh, gets to me. I'm worried just a little bit that there are that uh, many communists in, uh, in town now. Uh, a little worried. Mm -hmm. I was saying the uh, the communists, the, uh, the story you just read, uh, the phrase, uh, the Reds are alive and well and living in Mellonville seems to come to mind and uh, scares me just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, on the local scene, uh, the Mellonville police bunko squad tonight are still searching for notorious con artist, Abdul Chucky Wilson, who has pulled what some consider to be his biggest scam yet. Wilson has built the Mellonville Daughters of the American Revolution out of more than $2,000 for what he assured them were magic flying carpets. A spokesperson for the MDAR stated the women refuse to believe the carpets are a hoax and have been meeting daily for the past week trying everything in their power to make them fly. And although their efforts have been fruitless, they insist they will keep trying, although some are becoming a bit discouraged. The manhunt for Wilson continues. And um, Floyd, I, uh, I must say it really ticks me off that uh, people are taken advantage of like this, and uh, I, I, I hope the police start clamping down on this, uh, on this sort of activity. Uh, don't you think so, Floyd? Well, Johnny LaRue seems to be having his share of problems these days. An irate television pressure group set fire to uh, producer Johnny LaRue's car today over dissatisfaction with the success of his TV hit jiggle series, Johnny's Angels. As fireman doused the flames and obviously upset LaRue, gave his thoughts on this incident. Well, I just got out of my car. I was walking towards the studio. I turned around and I saw these two punks playing around with my car. Then they ran away. Next thing I know, my damn car blew up. I didn't get a good look at them, but I, I'll lay odds. They were either Mormons or Koreans. I wish I would have got a good look at them. Punks. Subsequent investigations prove the group was neither Korean nor Mormon. And now here with tonight's commentary is Earl Cannonbear. I'd like to talk briefly tonight about guts. The dark side of man that only surfaces and sees the light of glory here and there. I'm talking about a 38-year-old newsman who spent the past year drying out at a rehabilitation center who took life's kick in the teeth and came back with only a few missing. <laughs> Floyd Robertson, my close friend and associate, known to thousands of children as Count Floyd on SCTV's monster chiller horror theater, has done just that. He's back. A little less talkative, but he's back. And it wasn't easy. It took guts. That's not news, but that's the way I see it. Floyd? Floyd? Did he leave the studio? Is he? 
Is he drinking? Uh, the door's still shut. <clears throat> That's the news. Uh, 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 uh,